Hey, what's up y'all? My name is Relly, and welcome back to another episode of How You Do That, where I explain how I created something that I posted on social media. It's never the exact absolute way to do it, but it's the way that I did it. By the way, based off of my last few videos, you probably thought that I like cut my hair or something, but I just have it braided in the back right here. I still have my dreads, don't you worry. So these shelves behind me are capsule shelves and I made a video about them. You can go watch that if you want to, but they are modular shelves. So basically what I did was I took a video of one shelf at various spots on the shelf, which meant that I had to leave my camera in the same spot because I didn't want anything to move. The only thing that I was super worried about was the lighting, but for the most part, I think it worked out fine. One thing to note is that I use different songs on Instagram and TikTok because, well, I can't get hit with a copyright strike through TikTok and Reels as long as I use a song that's already on the app. YouTube, on the other hand, well, we know how that goes. But just because it is different songs for two of the videos, that doesn't mean that the process changes, as you'll see as we jump into Premiere Pro. I use Premiere Pro to edit this video, and I like to have my clips organized by name or colors because it makes things a little easier in my mind. I create a nine by 16 sequence, which was 2160 by 3840. For my music, I created markers in the track by listening to it and pressing the M key every time I envision the shelf changing spots, which was usually to the beat of the song. These markers make it easy to add the next shelf because if you have the snap and timeline activated, you can do that by pressing the S key it makes it easy to just drag and drop each clip to the desired area. Because the camera was on a tripod, I didn't have to worry about layering and masking as much, especially for this YouTube version. But for the TikTok and Instagram version, I did, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Next, I used the transform effect and I added scale keyframes to match to the beat of the song. One thing in the transform effect is to make sure that use composition shutter angle is unchecked and change that shutter angle to 180 or 200 or something similar. One last effect that I added was the offset effect and what this does is create an offset image of your current video. This was also time to the music, just like everything else. Every time the beat hit, I keyframe the offset to shift the center by 10-ish pixels on the X and Y axis. Then I did it back to the original, so it was very quick and very short. I blended the offset with the original at 50% so it would show up. Once I was satisfied with everything, I color corrected and color graded and exported and finished with the video that you saw at the beginning. Just For the TikTok and the Instagram versions, I did those in After Effects and masked out each shelf, which made for a bunch of layers. And the reason I did After Effects was because masking, in my opinion, is just easier in After Effects and it's a lot smoother. And I feel like After Effects can handle that as a program. But anyway, after masking out each shelf, I added words, the words to the song that I can't play on YouTube, to each shelf to time with it. Bonus points if you know the song just by reading the lyrics. Let me know down in the comments below if you do. And that, my friends, is how I did that. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. And while you're down there, don't forget the thumbs up bell. Really do appreciate it. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>